All right, thank you, Bernard. Um, thank you for having me. My name is Song Lin from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And this is a joint work with Tony Ke uh, from Chinese University of Hong Kong, as well as uh, Michelle Lu from uh, McGill University. So as I told uh, Bernard before in the email, the paper is still very preliminary and uh, we are still uh, trying to revise it quite a bit. Uh, I think this is a very good opportunity for us to, to uh, hear some feedback from you guys or from the uh, IO community so that we can know, you know how to take this work a little bit uh, further. Okay? So if you have any thoughts and questions, um, um, please feel free to let me know. Okay, so um, let me just uh, motivate a story here. So we all know that uh, big data is the big thing these days in many industries, including the retail industry. And I think most of us would agree that oh, there is an increasing use of data, right? Artificial intelligence or, or machine learning, deep learning, or other uh, analytic tools, trying to measure, identify customer behaviors customer preferences. And we see numerous examples of that. Um, now, if you think about retail platforms as a way to uh, facilitate trading between buyers and sellers, then I think there are two very important applications where big data or artificial intelligence is making a huge impact. One is product recommendation. Okay? We see retailers become more and more capable of recommending the right products to the customers. And the customers often pay more, more attention to those recommendations. And sometimes, or a lot of time, they, they are even persuaded by those recommendations. And the other one is targeting. Okay, so we see uh, retailers now can help sellers, manufacturers, find out uh, the right consumer sectors or target the uh, the right cons consumer segments that they want. Okay, so the big question that we are really af we are after in this paper is, what is the implication of this increasing data power, right, for the business model of retail platforms? So should they focus more on the traditional sales or transactions to to profit, or should they rely more on advertising? Now, in the last couple of years. Uh, we do see that advertising indeed has become a very important uh, source of revenue uh, for some of the biggest retail platforms in the world, like Amazon or Alibaba. And this has raised a lot of debate, right, about you know whether Amazon will become uh, somewhat more like Google. And is there any limit for advertising, okay, uh, for the retail? platform. And what is the boundary between these uh, advertising and the traditional retailer? So in light of this uh, increasing power of data. So our goal is really trying to uh, shed some light on these issues, okay, by looking into the uh, underlying economics of the problem. So we are going to approach the problem uh, from the perspective of information design. And this might seem a a little bit uh, unusual given our questions, uh, but I hope it will become clear when, when I lay out the model details later. But intuition and the idea is very simple, okay? So first, when we talk about that uh, information is useful, this is because consumers, they are, all, they are often uncertain about which product is the best match for them, right? So big data and, and artificial intelligence can come in and help platforms to obtain this kind of uh, information. So the problem for the for a typical online platform, retail platform is how to utilize this information and use this information to communicate to the buyers as well as the, 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 the sellers. Now to, to the buyers, the platform can make some product recommendations, okay, telling them which product is likely to match. And at the same time, for the sellers, the platform can tell them you know, which product is likely the target customer. Now, there is more to this story because when, when buyers receive some uh, communications, this, they often have the incentive to acquire information on their own. 
Okay, they actively seek information or search for information. Okay, and sometimes this is quite costly to them. And because of that, sellers often have some incentive to play a role in this process, okay, by making their products a little bit more prominent, okay, in their search process. And this in turn would also have an impact on the buyer's information search behavior. So the two behaviors, information behaviors are actually, they are endogenously related. So we try to find a simple model to look at these issues, okay? Um, looking at the information behaviors of all these players together. And specifically, we are going to use a very simple model to look at these uh, research questions. So first of all, what is the optimal design of the information environment on the retail platforms? Okay. In other words, given the infinite data, infinite amount of data, how should platform communicate with buyers and sellers? Okay, they may restrict the use of the data, okay, but that's optimal, okay? Um, so we allow the possibility of they have, they have all the data, but it may end up that, that you know, the, the platform may not really want to use up all the information. And along the way, uh, we're also trying to explore what does it really mean to the business model of these uh, 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 retail platforms. Okay, will the platform design the, the information in a way to lean a little bit towards the, the traditional sales or more towards advertising? Okay, so what's the underlying trade-off? So that's our, our objectives in this, uh, in this analysis. Now, before I um, lay out the model details, let me first give you a very um, broad overview of the related work so that uh, you can get a sense of you know, how this work of my feed in the literature. And this of course is not going to be exhaustive. So uh, perhaps after I present the theory, it may become much clearer what additional literature that we should also relate to. So please feel free to make any comments on that later. Okay. So first of all, um, the paper is really closely related to the growing literature on, on information design. Um, this is largely due to uh, Kamenica and Gensko's seminal work. Now the difference here um, is we are going to look at an application where there are multiple receivers, okay? And there is some communication among those rece receivers okay, in the format of uh, advertising. Okay, so that's uh, some of the, uh, applica the, the new application here. And second, we are also going to embed the consumer search problem under this information design. And this search problem is uh, slightly different from the standard model in the literature like the uh, Weizmann uh, model or Wolinsky's model, uh, because we here we are going to allow correlation across different products. Okay, so that uh, when a consumer search a product, they may learn something about other product, products as well. And the third trend of uh, literature um, that uh, we think that is relevant is the literature on position auctions on the consumer search. And the typical focus is really search advertising like, like on Google, okay? And here we are going to look at the ad auction, advertising auction on the retail platform, okay? And, uh, and look at how it may be influenced by, by the, the information design of the platform. Okay? So that's the uh, difference here. Now, finally, um, our key trade-off in the analysis is really between matching efficiency and uh, market thickness or market concentration in the advertising market. So this is uh, quite relevant uh, related to, to Levine and Milgram's work, okay? And one of the main ideas in, in that paper is that uh, final targeting okay, can actually improve matching between the advertisers and the consumers, but at the same time, they may, include, they may create a problem for monetization because now an advertiser can, uh, is facing a very thin mar market, okay? So very few other advertisers are willing to participate. Okay, so this creates a, 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 a monetization issue for the platform. Uh, but they didn't really formalize this trade-off with, with a model. So we essentially formalized their, their intuition, but in a, 
you know, slightly richer context here, uh, especially when targeting is endogenously um, determined by the information design. So that's, um, that's how I, uh, we think that our, our work is going to, to fit in uh, into the literature. Okay, so um, let me quickly give you a, um, a roadmap for what we're going to expect. So first I'm going to describe the, the model and then I'm going to present two extreme cases to just highlight the, the key trade-off, key mechanism here, okay? So we're gonna look, look at the, the case where there is, there's full information from the platform and there is no information from the platform. And then we talk about the optimal informati information designed by the, by the platform, okay? So that's gonna be the agenda here. Okay, so, we really have a very simple model here, a sort of a bare bone model here. Um, this is, I think it's sufficient to illustrate some of the, the major, uh, the main ideas here. So there is only one representative buyer and she has a unit demand, okay? Now this representative buyer is really uh, without loss of generality. So we, uh, we use one buyer really to trying to sim simplify the notations and, and analysis here. Uh, but uh, we are working on uh, extensions where, where we allow heterogeneous consumers in, in the model. And the unit demand is also uh, a simplifying crash, uh, assumption. And um, in particular, our search model would be quite, uh, quite simple given that, okay? So um, we are also working on a generalized demand function to have a richer uh, search behavior. So that's the, 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 con the consumer side. And we also have end sellers, but only one of them is going to match the consumer, the buyer's taste. If for this matched product, the utility for the bu buyer is going to be V, which is positive. And for all the remaining unmatched products, the utility is going to be zero. Now this is a pretty strong assumption, um, but it would make our analysis quite tradable uh, because we will have a pretty simple pricing equilibrium in, in this setting, okay? And we, we can of course extend the model to, to the more general setting where each seller has independent value to the buyer, uh, but pricing is a little bit more complex like in the Wolin's case model. We are working on a, a slightly simpler version of that, okay? with IID value, IID match values, but the match remains uh, binary. Okay, so that would also uh, simplifies a lot of the, 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 the pricing issues there. Uh, but what we want to show it uh, in this talk is trying to focus on the uh, information design issue. So we'll keep the correlation assumption here uh, for this talk. There is a common power prior, okay, given this information structure. So each uh, seller has the same chance of uh, uh, matching the buy, okay? The, uh, uh, it's one over N. And there is a state of the word. It's gonna tell which one is the match. And what the platform can do is really to design this, uh, this uh, information structure, we call it pi, which is uh, uh, the same in the, in the standard uh, literature. So what it means is that it specifies a single space, S, capital S, and some distributions, okay, depends on the underlying state of the world. So therefore, uh, signal realization really reveals something about the underlying state, okay? So one example here is that uh, there is, when there is full information, then the signal realization is always the same as the, the state. So it completely reveals which product is the match. Another example is the no information environment, uh, in which case the signal realization is independent of the state. For example, the signal always says that uh, product one is the match, no matter what the, the truth is. And we'll come back to these two extreme cases uh, in a minute, uh, in, in two slides. All right, so the timing is the following. Uh, first, the platform is going to determine the information to some pi, and then commit to that in the rest of the game. And based on that, a signal is realized and both the buyer and the sellers are going to observe this, this design and the signal, okay? And the signal realization. 
Now for the sellers, uh, what they can do is they can simultane simultaneously set the price. But unless it is advertised or recommended, it will not be observable to the buyer. Okay. And they also submit a bid to the advertising auctions. Okay. So we assume that uh, the auction is, is there by default. And if they win the win the auction, okay, uh, they will get the prominent position. Okay, so in this talk, we would just uh, consider the standard, the second price auction here. And we think the intuition is quite similar if we have other formats of auctions, like first price or generalized second price. And, and it is very likely that they don't really uh, improve the platform profit applying the, uh, the standard revenue equivalence theorem. Now, given this, uh, these prices and, and bidding, um, the buyer, is going to observe any advertised product. Well, there is only one, one advertised product. Okay, so they are going to observe this advertised product at no cost. So in other words, advertising is really providing the free search here. And then they, uh, the buyer can decide whether to continue to search uh, for other products, but at a cost, okay? So here, when, uh, in this talk, when I talk about search is really continue to search, okay, after, of the advertised product. And given all the information obtained, either from the ad or from, from searching, um, the buyer will decide whether to make a purchase or not. Okay, so because of our setup, the, the buyer will only purchase the product if there is a match. Okay, As, and, and when, when the, the Nessa plus is, is uh, non-negative. Now, if there is any transaction, then the platform is going to take uh, take take a share. Okay, so the platform and the seller is to, is going to split the profit with a share of alpha goes to uh, platform. Now we are going to treat this uh, commission fee uh, alpha or loyalty rate as exogenous. Okay, so this could be could be true when there is some competition uh, between the platforms. Okay. Uh, where the, the commission fee is really driven by this, uh, this competition. Uh, but of course, uh, we can always uh, end endogenize this, uh, this, uh, this commission fee. Okay? And it's also quite easy to do that, all right? Okay, so uh, maybe I should pause here in case there is any clarification question on the model before we move on. So I have one clarification question. So do I understand correctly that both sellers and the buyer get the same signal? So there's one basically information designed for both at the same time. Oh, thank you for the question. Very good question. Yes. So uh, we assume this is a public uh, signals to both the, the buyer and the sellers. Okay. Right. So in principle, um, it might be optimal to use two different, you know. Yes. Products. Yes. Yes. So um, we, we have thought about that, um, but then a lot of issues came out if we, we just uh, send the signals privately to one side. Right? So uh, the, for example, you send to, to the sellers and then the sellers would do a lot of uh, signaling. Right? So uh, something that uh, would uh, you know, complicate the, the picture here. So uh, we, we stay away from that for, 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 for quite some time, but it's something that we can, Possibly we can we can do some extension on that. But thank you for the for the for the for the question. Dan Seville is asking if V is commonly known or is there a distribution? Oh, v is commonly commonly known. So everybody everybody knows V, but um, nobody knows the whether the product actually match or not. So if match is D, if not match is zero. So it's binary. Uh, asking a follow-up on that then. So then this is like a very strong version of Athey and Ellison where there's only one product that fulfills a need, right? So it's taking yes. their fulfilling a need and making it even stronger. Um, yes, I agree. This is a very, very strong assumption. Yeah. So um, the reason we made that assumption is we start out from with very uh, general, you know, idea assumptions and, and, and uh, it turns out that the pricing doesn't work out, really complicates the information design problem. So we we try to way find a way to 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 abstract away the pricing issue there, and it turns out that this this model has quite elegantly you know uh, uh, actually deal with that issues, um, 
and 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 just a couple of days ago we we have thought about uh, some extensions where we can extend the model to some ex with some 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 idea assumption and but we have to keep the binary uh, binary assumption so that uh, we can uh, we can we can still keep the pricing issue a little bit uh, simple you know simple format okay but thank you Song, two more questions by yep. Larry White. Uh, who receives the revenue from the bid and is the winner the firm that advertises? Who received the revenue from the, the bidding? Oh, so, so this, uh, we assume the, the second price auction. Right, but the, but the, yes. uh, the, you know, the bid gets paid to somebody. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, what is the bidding process? Um, you know, are you uh, bidding a hundred dollars? You know, I'll pay a hundred dollars to be the prominent uh, firm and who receives the hundred dollars? Is it the platform? Uh, what What's going on in, in the auction? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so what's going on here is that uh, we assume the second price option. So uh, every every seller is going to bid, and the winner is going to take the prominent position, and then the winner is going to pay the second highest bid to who? pay to the to to the platform. To the platform. So the platform, the platform yes. receives the uh, the revenue from the auction and the share alpha. Exactly. Okay. And it is only the prom the winner of the auction who gets to uh, do the advertising? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Okay. So I think I should uh, move on here. Um, okay. So let us uh, first look at the very simple extreme case where the platform can review all the information right um we just assume that okay um so the the signal has to has to match the underlying state okay then the both the buyer and the sellers they're going to learn the match for for sure okay so uh in in practice you can think of this as you know making a recommendation a perfect recommendation to the buyer and the buyer knows that this is exactly the match and at the same time uh, the platform also tells the, the sellers that this person is going to, to be a target. He's going to like your product. Okay, so that's a, that's a two way. You can think of this as two way recommendations or, or, or recommendation to buyer and target, targeting to the sellers. Either interpretation is fine. Now, um, essentially, um, in this case, this communication strategy, uh, this, uh, this information environment is going to create a, a very thin market in the terminology of Levin and, and, and Milgram, okay? So only one seller is, is going to, to participate, which is the match seller, right? So the match seller then is going to charge the reservation price or the monop monopoly price, and the buyer is going to take it. And then all the remaining sellers, they become irrelevant, okay? Because the buyer has no interest in it. So in the end, the platform uh, can secure transactions and just take the share of, uh, of the profit, alpha V. Okay, so that's a very simple case, all right? Now, the other extreme is there is no information reviewed. Okay, this is a little bit more involved. So in this case, um, so for example, the platform can say, uh, product one is always the match regardless of the, the underlying state. Okay, so it doesn't really convey any information. So we have we we are going to focus on the symmetric equilibrium, okay, uh, in which the all the sellers are going to set the same price and they bid the same they submit the same bid. Now first we need to solve for the buyer search problem, okay, where the buyer expects all the unadvertised price to be set at the same price. Now, this is a slightly different version from the Wolinsky's uh, uh, model because uh, here we have uh, a correlation across different products, right? So um, this may seem that the, 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 the optimal search rule would be uh, 
would be not stationary, but it turns out that there is a very simple search rule for that. So there is a threshold. Okay, if the net surplus sub net surplus is below a particular threshold, then the buyer will never search. Okay, but if it's about the threshold, then the buyer will can we will search until she finds the match. Okay, if she finds the she search a product, if it's not a match, then she will just continue to 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 search okay? until the the product tells tells that uh, this is a, a match. Okay, and the idea is actually very simple here. So if at some point the buyer uh, find it optimal to to continue to search, okay, then if this uh, this uh, this uh, this product that he has already searched is not a match, then it will only strengthen her, her incentive to continue to search, okay, tomorrow, okay. So uh, so her uh, her search incentive is is going to increase if there is no there is no match, okay. So she will just keep searching until the match is found. Okay, so very simple idea here. And this really simplifies a lot of uh, uh, things here in the analysis, okay? Now, how should, how should the sellers price? Uh, I saw a, a question, is there a question in the chat? Uh, how, is, how is the tie-in bids uh, allocated? Uh, sorry, can you say that again? Uh, if, the, if all of these firms bid the same amount, does the platform have a tie-breaking rule? What is the? Oh yeah, so um, so because it's not in this trick. case they, yeah, so uh, they would just uh, uh, if everybody bid the same, they would just randomize. Why though, if they've got information? So they've got information. Are they able? To, or am I missing something? Why wouldn't the uh, tiebreaking rule to be just the firm that they know is going to meet the need? Who gets the information? Sorry, I. The platform. Why wouldn't the would the platform consider using a tie-breaking rule to favor? Oh, so so here we we assume that uh, the platform is going to commit to to an information environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So everything is committed. Yeah. Just like in the in standard uh, uh, analysis. Um. Okay. So then uh, we should uh, we should. Um, we should figure out how, how the seller sellers bid or, or price, right? So um, to do that, let's fix the prices. So given the prices, there are two possible cases. So first, the buyer may end up uh, uh, searching, okay, which means that uh, she would she would search until finding a match according to our uh, previous result. So if Tyson doesn't really affect the demand here, okay, uh, then the sellers really have no incentive to to advertise a bid. So they will simply be uh, zero, okay? And the second possibility is that the buyer does not, uh, does not search at all, okay, given the prices. Now this, this will imply that whichever advertises on the prominent position will get the entire demand, okay? Because they are not going to continue to search. Um, then all the sellers will compete to win this uh, position. Okay, they will submit a bid that is the same as their surplus, okay, which is going to be this uh, quantity of or minus alpha times the Pn divided by n because there is a, a one over n poss possibility of matching, right? So if they win the, the, the option, they will get this amount. So they will pay, they will bid for uh, exactly bid that amount, okay? Okay. And we can summarize this, uh, this result in, in a pretty simple lemma here. Basically now what, what we only need to do is to restrict to these uh, uh, bidding strategies, okay? But the next thing to do is really trying to figure out the equivalent prices given this is, this is the optimal way of bidding okay, no matter uh, what the price is. And it turns out that uh, in equilibrium, all the sellers would just charge the monopoly price the reservation price D so that the buyer does not search. So this in turn is going to ensure that the sellers are going to advertise very aggressively. So in this equilibrium, the sellers will not have any incentive to lower price because it doesn't really improve the chance of winning the auction or increase the demand, okay? 
but lowering the price will only reduce the surplus if they win the, the auctions. Okay, so they, they don't want to do that. So this in turn is going to ensure that the buyer has no incentive to, to, to search at all. Okay, so strengthening this, uh, this, uh, uh, the, the, this behavior, this pricing behavior. Now, the question is, is this equivalent unique? And the answer is yes. If we can think about two possible alternative equivalent candidates here, given our previous lemma. One is that um, all the sellers are going to price below this uh, reservation price, but no one ever does. And this can be sustainable only when the buyer ends up uh, searching, okay, according to our early lemma on the optimal bidding. But if that is the case, then the buyer will find out the, the match product eventually. And, and the buyer is willing to, uh, uh, to pay the reservation price. Okay, so the sellers would have an incentive to raise the price uh, to, 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 make, uh, to make a profit. Now, the second candidate is that all the sellers are going to price below, also below this reservation price V, but they, they bid quite aggressively uh, to, their, to, to, to their maximum uh, incentive to bid. So in this case, the buyer will not search. What would happen then is that the sellers can raise the price slightly and this can raise the surplus if winning, which in turn is going to allow the sellers to bid even more aggressively, right? Because they can, they can profit a little bit more. Okay, so eventually this will allow the sellers to strictly improve the profit. And therefore this type of equipment is not going to uh, sustain. Okay, so that at the end, we, this is uh, um, the, only, the only possible equipment here is that all sellers are priced at the uh, reservation price and they're going to beat, uh, beat this quantity. Okay, one, alpha, one minus alpha times uh, the, the reservation uh, price divided by n. Okay. Now in the end, the platform is going to expect some profit from the commission fee and, and some profit from, from the advertising auction. But the trade-off here is that there is a, a chance that the buyer does not really like the advertised product. So that there is a there is no transaction here. Okay, that's the that's the downside here. Um, now recall that in the full information case, the platform is going to secure profit alpha alpha v, right? So the comparison between these two profits is quite straightforward. So if alpha n greater than one, um, in other words, when 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 the commission fee is a little bit higher or there are more sellers in the market, then the platform prefers full information. Okay. And they, they want to rely on commission fee. Now, conversely, if this is not the case, then the platform is going to prefer uh, no information and tries to make a balance between sales and advertising in this case. Okay. But what we have shown here is really a very extreme, extreme uh, cases, right? So we look at two very extreme cases of uh, full information and no information. I'm trying to figure out the, the key trade-off here. The question is, can the platform do better than, than what is done here, okay? And to answer that, uh, we, need, we need to have uh, introduced a little bit more notations here. So first we need to specify the receivers, the, the buyer and the sellers in, in, this, in this case. We need to specify their posterior beliefs, okay? Um, such that what the, what's the likelihood of, what's the belief that the product N is going to be the match, okay? Um, the price is that there, there is equal, equal chance of being matching, okay? And, the posterior also need to satisfy the, the condition that all the, all the posterior beliefs have to sum up to one. And we also need to introduce a distribution of beliefs okay, induced by a particular information design part. Okay, so this is going to play, play a role to allow us to identify the optimal design. So we're going to follow the, the very classic steps in, in this literature, in the basic persuasion literature, we first find the concave closer of the platform profit under all possible beliefs. And then uh, we're going to find the base possible tau that can maximize the platform's profit. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. Okay. 
Now, in the interest of time, uh, let me just illustrate the main idea in the case of three products. So most of the, the logic really is uh, really the same. Let me generalize it to, to, to n products. So in this case, um, first under the, this very general information environment, it's not hard to show that, you know, again, like in the no information case, uh, the sellers are going to price at the monopoly price, the reservation price, and there is no incentive for the buyer to, to search in an equilibrium. Okay? And the intuition, intuition is similar to, to, to the earlier case. So whenever the prices are below, in, below uh, are low enough to induce buyer to search, the sellers will find a prof profitable deviation okay, by raising the price a little bit okay, without losing any demand or, or losing the, the, the auction. Okay. And we're going to take that as given. Then it's quite clear that the, the seller's incentive to bid okay, is going to be driven by, uh, by this, uh, this uh, uh, reservation price, the fraction of the reservation price weighted by the corresponding belief, okay? Mu one, mu two, or mu three, okay? Now let's say that the, the three beliefs are in decreasing order, okay? So without loss of generality. Now the platform profit has two components here, okay? One is from the commission fee, from the first seller, which is going to win the auction because it can bid most aggressively, right? But this winning seller only pays for the second seller's bid, okay, which depends on the second seller's belief. Okay? So even though there are three, three sellers here, what really play, playing a role here is the first two, um, the, the, the highest, uh, uh, the two sellers with the highest beliefs. Now we need to find, find out the set of beliefs that can actually maximize this profit. And this is actually quite simple because we, everything is linear, right? So uh, we can just look at the stream uh, corner solutions here. So in the case where uh, the commission fee is high enough, then it is optimal to make everyone believe that you know, product one is the match, okay? So this is exactly uh, the same as the full, inf full information case. So it is optimal to, to just truthfully review this match, okay? So this is simple. Now, if the commission rate is a little bit lower, lower than half, then it is optimal to let everyone believe that both products one and product two, they are equally likely to be the match. Okay, so in this case, the joint profit of commission and, and advertising is maximized. Okay, and notice that this is a little bit higher than the earlier case when, when there is no information, in which case we, the platform can only achieve uh, one third of the the reservation price. Okay, so uh, it, there is some improvement here. That's why you know, uh, making, uh, designing the information environment optimally can actually help improve the, the profit. Okay. Okay, so for the second case, uh, we need to find an optimal distribution of beliefs to, 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 to achieve, uh, to satisfy the key conditions uh, in, in uh, in, in, in the persuasion, in the optimal persuasions, okay? Um, it turns out that uh, we can do the following, okay? So let's consider the, the first state, to say that uh, the first product is the, the match, right? So we can, we can assign the weight in the, following, in, in the following way. So the belief that the first product is the match is half and the belief for the, the, the second product is, is the match is going to be also half, okay? But the belief for the last state, the last product is the, is the match is going to be zero. And we are going to place equal weights on all these beliefs, okay? So that would allow us to, to achieve the, the optimal profit. And at the same time, also satisfy the key condition in, in the persuasion literature which is the, uh, it has to be a uh, base plausible, okay? So in this way, we can, we can achieve that, okay? So uh, it's consistent with the prior, right? Because every signal, every uh, information design has to in, uh, in, induce the beliefs that is consistent with the prior. 
All right. Um, how can we induce this set of beliefs? We can design the following signal structure. Okay, this is one way to do that. Okay, so uh, if the set the state says that you know part of one is the match, then the platform can uh, produce a signal telling that you know both product one and product two are equally likely to be the match, but product three is not the match. Okay, so the platform can recommend the first two products to the buyer and says that these two are equally likely to be the match, so you take one of them. Now this message is also communicated uh, with the sellers as well. So the seller one and seller two, they are going to be told that you know there is half chance that the buyer is going to be your target customers, and then they're going to beat. Now for the other two products, the platform can do the same. Okay, so when the state is uh, is that the second product is the match, then the the sellers uh, the platform can communicate in a similar way by saying that. Uh, product two and product three are likely to match with equal chance. Okay, but first, the first product is not a match. Now, when the state is, the, is such that the last product is the match, then the, the platform can say that the first product and the last product are equally likely to be the match. Okay, the second product is not. So in these ways, we can induce the uh, the optimal tau that we we want to achieve. Okay. And this logic can be applied very generally, okay, to any uh, number of uh, sellers here. So in the end, um, we achieve very similar results. We get very similar uh, conditions here. When the commission fee is high enough, then the platform would go with the full information okay, because it's optimal to do that. So they would take the optimal profit alpha V. But if it's below the, 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 the one half uh, threshold, then partial information is optimal. The way it achieves pa partial information is by, by what we, do, we call it the cost recommendation. Okay, so we recommend only two products to, to the buyers. Okay, and at the same time also persuade two sellers to bid. Okay, one of them is going to be the match. Okay, and in, in this way, the platform can expect a profit of uh, half of a V. Okay, which is greater than the case when, when there's no information. Okay, uh, so, so, uh, so this is uh, improvement profit. Now, in some sense, uh, this is uh, reminiscent of uh, the, the 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 idea of conflation in, in Levin and, and Milgram's paper. Okay, it is sort of also uh, uh, similar to the idea of cost matching or broad matching in in position auctions. Okay, so you can, can get some flavor of that uh, in, in this analysis. Okay, so let me conclude. So the main takeaway here is uh, what we have shown is that when we have more information, okay, um, buyers and sellers, they, they, are more, they are going to be matched more efficiently by the platform, but buyers would have less needs to search. And sellers will also have less need to advertise. So by uh, the, the platform can secure some profit, uh, sort of secure the sales and relies on the commission fee to profit, okay? But conversely, if there is less information, then buyers would have more needs to search. Okay, so sellers, uh, they would, they're going to, to, to bid very, very aggressively advertise very aggressively to, to get those, uh, those buyers. They're gonna bid very aggressively. And the, and the platform can extract more advertising and revenue because of that, okay? But by, by the cost of missteps. So it's likely that there is no transaction at all. Okay, so that's gonna be the, the, the key trade off uh, in, in this analysis. And the optimal information designs is going to uh, lie somewhere in between and trying to balance this trade-off between matching efficiency and the market concentration in the, in the advertising market. Okay? So this can be achieved by, by conflation in product limitation and restricting to a smaller set of uh, products. Okay? So that's uh, pretty much uh, the main idea of the, the, the paper. Um, let me end with a few, you know, um, directions that, uh, that we, are, we are working on right now and also address some of the, 
the earlier clarification questions. So in one direction, we are working, trying to work on uh, heterogeneous bias. Okay, so this will add a little bit uh, richer context to the packaging issue by the by the advertisers. And the second direction is um, we we have a very simple unit demand here. Um, and this simplifies the, the consumer search problem, right? Because uh, they're not going to search because the, the sellers are going to charge at the equivalent, the, the reservation price. So there's little incentive for consumer to search. But if we allow consumer to have some generalized demand, then the price may not be reached the reservation price. So there is always some, some room for the consumers to explore other options. And the third direction is that um, we have assumed, we have made a very strong assumption that, you know, there's only one match out of all the products, right? Uh, but in principle, we can, we can allow, you know, different products to have different match values. Uh, of course, as I just mentioned in talk, it's quite, quite difficult in that way, okay? Uh, the pricing equilibrium is very difficult to, to sort out. So we may need to make uh, some additional assumptions there uh, by, assuming that the match value is still a binary. And the last directions uh, we want to go, we're gonna go into is um, here we assume second price auction, but, um, but in practice, you know, you know, auctions are very complex. You know, uh, the first price, there's generalized second price. Uh, the platforms can allow multiple sellers to, to be prominent in, in, by winning the auctions, right? So um, there are, there are various of kinds of auctions. So we are trying to explore if we add those complexities, how does it change to our main, uh, main result? Okay, so that's uh, some of the directions that uh, we are exploring. Uh, all right, so I think uh, I should probably stop here. Thank you for listening. And um, we can take more questions if you, if you have.